This is Will Spencer from the Renaissance of Men here with the New 21 Report and Trevor Loudon. Trevor, welcome. Hey, good, good to talk to you, Will. Thank you. Good to talk to you, too. Thanks for coming out to the 21 Convention. What was the, uh, what was, I heard some of your talk at 21 Patriarchs event. What was the subject matter of the talk? Well, I was talking about Marxism and, and that what we're really seeing in America now is a revolutionary process. And, and this is a men's conference. Um, and what we're seeing is a war on men. We're seeing war on hierarchy. We're seeing more, a war on the patriarchy. The feminist movement is, is, is Marxist at root. The LGBTQ movement is Marxist at root. And the point I wanted to make is we can't see these phenomena as separate. They're all manifestations of Marxism. Um, the attack on men, the attack on masculinity is part of a basically a revolutionary plan to overturn this country. Mm-hmm. Did you find that the men understood or resonated with the message? Yeah, I think largely they did. You know, they, they, they might have a, a specific thing that, that they are looking at, mm-hmm. but I think when I brought it into, you know, connected a few of the dots, I think they could see, yeah, this, this goes beyond mere accident mm-hmm. and that these things are, are linked, you know. Like, like Marxism is a revolutionary process. You know, we're, we're given, it's, it's overturning all the natural hierarchies of life. You know, you know, Western culture was, good, you know, supported for many years by the church, by the family and civil government. All of those institutions are under massive attack. Mm-hmm. So the war on men is part of a wider war on, on Western civilization. Mm-hmm. What are some of the strongest piece of, pieces of evidence that you show men to show them that there's more going on here beneath the surface than, you know, may meet the eye, let's say? Yeah, well, I, I look in my books and my movies, I'm just doing a movie right now called Enemies Within the Church. Mm-hmm. And we, we deal there with the communist origins of the homosexual rights movement, the LGBTQ movement. Mm-hmm. You know, Harry Hay, Communist Party member, was the first gay rights activist. Um, groups like ACT UP and others, all Marxist groups, you know, the the feminist groups, the abortion movement, you can trace it all back to the Communist Party USA, the Socialist Workers Party, etc. So we can we can point out very clearly the Marxist origins of these movements and the Marxist leaders of these movements even today. Um, you know, the L the, the the, tra- the transgender movement and the, it, it's, that's common now in the schools and colleges, you can, you can show the Marxists involved in this. You can show the Marxist writings about it. It's all a deconstruction of Western society, the hierarchies that we hold as normal. It's all part of the wider revolutionary process. Where did this deconstruction come from? I know some of the names. I know you mentioned some of mentioned some of them in your talk, but maybe you can share some of them here. Well, you know, the the communist movement. You know, the the big mistake that most people see is they see the communist movement or the Marxist movement as an economic thing. It's all about the workers rising up and taking the wealth of the bosses, but that's only a very small part of this. Mm-hmm. So you know, Karl Marx was was someone who really championed this. Um, but then you had Marcuse, who brought it more into the social constructs. You know, that this is about the, the genders as well, the war of the sexes, that the feminists will rise up and take away the power of the patriarchy. You can see it in the gay movement with Harry Hay, who, who elevated homosexuality as, as being superior to, to heterosexuality. You know, this was a war on the family. You know, the Betty Friedans of the world, the... Gloria Steinem's, all of these women who elevated, you know, brought the feminist movement forward, Emmeline Pankhurst, all Marxist, all Communist Party members, all members of Democratic Socialists of America, all of these movements you can trace back to Marxism and Marxism as an attempt to overturn the social structures of society to replace it with a socialist communist society. And so... When we look at men's issues, we look at the corruption in the legal system that, that, that you know, gives men an unequal deal. When we look at the elevation of the LGBTQ movement, the transgender movement, we have to understand them as part of a revolutionary process. And we cannot deal with them if we just think they're just crazy people doing crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. This is Marxist-directed, 
um, still involved with China, still involved with Russia, still involved with hostile foreign powers, using social movements in this country to destroy this country so that China, Russia, et cetera, can basically run the planet mm -hmm. according to their standards. So all these movements are coordinated, hmm. but it seems like when you try to explain this to people, not you, you, but the royal you or when I or when many yes, try to explain sure. this to people, they say, oh, no, it's just a coincidence or incompetence. Yeah. And those are the two main. What do you say to that? Well, look, you know, if it was just incompetence, wouldn't people make mistakes in our favor once in a while? You know, the classic example right now is, is, is the disaster in Afghanistan. Right. You know, this was just incompetence. How could anybody be so stupid as to withdraw the military while you still had civilians on the ground, while you still had a big air base full of billions of dollars worth of material? How could anybody be so stupid? Well, it's stupid to think that is stupidity. You know, these, these are clever people running the United States. Not saying Biden's clever, I'm saying the people behind him, the Susan Rices, the Barack Obamas, Xi Jinping. This was a deliberate policy by the US government at the behest of China to basically turn over, to, to basically turn over all this material to China's friends and America's enemies. Now, it, now the most of the West's allies look at America and think, how the heck can we ever trust America again? We better start making other agreements. So that that incident in Afghanistan changed the world balance of power. It also helped China another way because China wants to invade the Pacific, but it had this American base on its western flank, and that would have meant they'd have to fight a two-front war. Well, now they don't have to fight a two-front war. They can use that. It's freed them up to attack the Pacific. So what I, what I say to people is this: there is evil in the world. There is malevolence. There's always been statists and dictators and socialists and fascists and communists who want to change everything about everything, you destroy the West. And because the West is based on Christian principles, it's based on constitutionality, it's based on rule of law, and it's based on all these things that dictators hate. So don't you think Xi Jinping would want to overturn that? Don't you think Vladimir Putin would want to overturn that? Don't you think, and don't you think they have agents in this country who are working to their benefit? You know, we, we have ignored internal security in this country for 50 years now, and that's, we are seeing the results of that. Oh, absolutely. This is 2021 right now. And I think, yeah. it, to me, I feel like it's undeniable that many of the things you're saying are, are true. Yeah. And you must receive a lot of pushback for saying these things. No, that can't possibly be real. Well, you do. But, but look, I, I, I produce documentaries. I produce, we've got a new one coming out, Enemies Within the Church, which will rock American Christianity, I believe. Mm. But, you know, I have documentaries on Black Lives Matter, how they're basically an operation of the Chinese Communist Party. Mm. And I can prove this. Mm. Uh, but you still have big corporations giving these people money. You still have churches taking a knee to these people. You still have people saying, well, this is just an anti-racism movement. No, it is a communist Chinese directed movement to burn American cities, create maximum racial division, and bring this country to its knees. You know, when I say these things, I can give you the documentary evidence to back them up. I can show you the words from their own words. You know, I can, I can show you the people who organized the rioting in Minneapolis talking about the joy they felt when Precinct 3 was burnt to the ground, how the rioting, the looting, and the arson was an integral part of their movement, in their own words, saying this on tape. Mm -hmm. Have you been engaging with the speakers, or sorry, the men, the attendees, or have they been mm -hmm. engaging with you outside of the sessions? Have you been having conversations well, with them? Well, in? as much as possible, I've had to go away to deal with other engagements. But yeah... Um, and I found it very stimulating, I have to say. You know, everybody's got a slightly different angle on these problems. But I think the perspective I have is I can unify them a little bit more. Each of these problems is not separate. Each of these problems is a result of a program. Mm -hmm.
But so I've uh, but I've deepened my understanding of several aspects of it mm-hmm. by talking to the to the people at this conference. Mm-hmm. So it's it's that's what that's what makes it worthwhile coming here for me. Can you share one of the subjects you've uh, gained a deeper appreciation of? Well, um, there's a I just can't remember his last name. Greg talked. Coach talk, Greg Adams. Coach Greg Adams talked a lot about the sort of common things, you know, happy wife, happy life, you know, and talked about how if we have, if men have problems with women, it's because men have allowed that to happen. It's allowed the feminist myths. It's because we ourselves have bought into these feminine myths and we don't challenge them. We don't set the ground rules with the women in our lives. And therefore, the femi- the, 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 the feminist Marxism intrudes into our relationships. And that was an insight to me. Yeah, yeah. It, if we have a problem, it's because we've allowed that problem to be there. You know, Marxists do what Marxists do. Tyrants do what tyrants do. Radicals do what radicals do. They affect us to the degree that we allow them to affect us, to the degree that we don't say no, to the degree that we don't set boundaries. So, yeah, there was, a, there was some good insights there for me personally. Have you spent any time in the 22 convention room or talked to any of the women attendees? No, I haven't. I've, I've, I had to leave the convention to go and attend to a, an other business, so I wasn't here for most of that time. Do you find that women engage with you on these topics as much as men do, less so, maybe even more? Yeah, well, in this particular, you know, I, I, I'm not normally talking about the relationship between the sexes, and, and uh, I'm more talking to political groups about Marxist infiltration, that kind of thing. But I do, I have been bringing those aspects more into a lot of the, the talks I do to churches because I think one of the big problems in the churches is a big misunderstanding of what love is. You know, most churches are all about love. Love, 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 love. It's the most common word. But it's all the feminine side of love. It's all we will nurture you, we'll help you, we'll expect you. It's not the masculine side of love who will call you to account, who will hold you to judgment. And when I talk about the value of masculine love in the churches, I get a lot of women come up to me and say, yeah, right on. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I talk about, you know, the feminine love is, is the mother who will pick you up, who will bandage your knee, who will um, accept you or bake cookies with you and, and just be a mother, you know, just what, it, we all crave that. But there's the love of the father who will boot your little backside if you disrespect your mother, who will take, take, you, to, take you to the ball game, take you fishing, to the woodshed if necessary, you know, who will teach his son to be a man and his daughter to be a lady. And that has been driven out of the churches and largely driven out of Western society. So when I speak about those issues, which I have been more in recent times, yeah, a lot of women engage with me on that. They 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 say hallelujah. They you see know? the lack of masculinity and they see you talking about it. Yeah, look, look, it, it's men have got to be men. You know, we we are we have roles, and when a man has been a man and a woman's been a woman, it's complementary. And the children are, you know, you produce something that's greater than the sum of the parts. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's, but when a man is not being a man, a woman can't really be a woman. So they feel cheated. Men are not living to their full potential, and the children have to suffer the consequences. And so, you know, I'm encouraged, you know, men have got to stand up. It's, you know, cur- and it's, it's a lack of courage. And courage becomes is because of a lack of faith. You, you have a lack of faith in your own masculinity. You don't understand. You have been told continuously that men are toxic, that masculinity is toxic. So you you don't have faith. You don't have certainty in your own role, and therefore you have less courage. You know, I, I, a lot of women are out there right now fighting against critical race theory in the schools, which is just a, a racial as form of Marxism. And the big complaint they have that I see all the time is where are the men, and where are the churches. We're fighting this all by ourselves. You know, we need the men to be fighting there in the trenches too. They're the dads, they're half of the family. You know, they've got to be there too. So, yeah, I do, 
a lot of women do, when I speak like this, a lot of women go, yeah, right on. Um, it's great to see a man boldly saying these kind of things, mm -hmm. talking about hierarchy, talking about patriarchy. Um, and they appreciate it. They really, really do. Did that surprise you? Yeah, a little bit, you know, a little <laughs> bit. But, um, you know, I buy some of the feminist myths too, you know. But, um, and just when I mentioned the hi hierarchy, you know, hierarchy is something we should glorify. Hierarchy is something we should appreciate. Even Jordan Peterson, who I really appreciate, is really very good. He doesn't get hierarchy. Mm. He's always talking about how we've got to flatten the hierarchy and mm. hierarchy can be a bad thing. Yeah, hierarchy can be a bad thing as anything, but we cannot live without hierarchy. Mm. You know, God, man, nature. That's a hierarchy. You know, boss, worker, master, apprentice, father, mother, children. They are hierarchies. And when we try and screw around with those hierarchies or ignore those hierarchies, we're, 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 we're part of the revolution because the revolution, the Marxist revolution, the revolution is about overturning the natural hierarchies of life and replacing them with unnatural hierarchies. We will never get rid of a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. It's either a natural hierarchy, a good hierarchy, or it's a bad feminist, Marxist type of hierarchy. You know, right, right now we are, we're being told that nature is superior to man, mm -hmm. that we, man is a cancer on the earth, yeah. and we've got to reduce our population. We've got to, you know, get rid of global warming and all that. This is all garbage. Man is placed above nature. Nature is here for our benefit. And when we buy into, so we don't get rid of hierarchy when we say that, you know, we just, they, they, they put nature above us, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, so, so respecting hierarchy, but the right hierarchies is a very, very important thing of what we need to do to, to right our society. Mm -hmm. Because the revolutionaries have been out there trying to destroy our hierarchies for a hundred years, mm -hmm. trying to overturn everything that we hold dear, overturn the family, overturn civil government, overturn the church. And if we allow them to happen, we are, we are, we are heading for a world of chaos. Why the hundred year figure specifically? Like, does that refer to a, a particular date or a particular event? Some men will trace the beginning of the real decline to the 1960s, the sexual revolution. Oh, it was way before that. It was before that, but you know, yeah. this sort of many men pick different dates. Why did yeah. you uh, choose a hundred years ago? The Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, okay. You know, because look, we've always had, you know, as right back to the days of Adam, we've had people trying to bring down overturn the hierarchy, you know, overturn the natural hierarchies. Um, Karl Marx made a little bit of a science of it. Mm -hmm. The feminist movement, which was a Marxist movement, came along in the late 1890s. Uh, it got really beefed up after the Bolshevik Revolution. After you had the Bolshevik Revolution, all of these things then had state backing. Mm -hmm. You had the Soviet Union funding. You know, they would clamp down on homosexuality at home because they wanted to keep their system together. They would clamp down on feminism at home because they wanted to keep their social structures intact. But they funded all these movements in the West. They, they wrote books. That they, they funded authors who wrote books. They directly funded communist parties and communist movements. Mm -hmm. So it went into overdrive in the early 1920s because that's by, by then the Bolshevik Revolution had consolidated itself and was starting to fund revolutionary activity all around the world. Mm. America almost had a communist revolution in 1922. Mm. People don't un people don't have have not understood that. I I'm one of them. Yeah, well, look, look, they they were very worried. They they had to deport something like 10,000 foreign revolutionaries after the Palmer raids of 1921, 22. Wow. Yeah, they they sent them back to Eastern Europe. Because we were having bombings, we were having mass strikes. There was a real danger in the early 20s we were going to have a Bolshevik revolution in America. And they, they pushed it back at that time. But it got a foothold in Hollywood. It got a foothold in the churches. It got a foothold in the feminist movement. 
got a foothold in the LGBT, the, the gay movement through Harry Hay and people like that. So what we're seeing in America right now is the fruits of the Bolshevik revolution. Mm. You know, it is still, we're still feeling effects and now it's largely run by China and Cuba. But Russia's still in there. Russia's still doing it. Putin is all, I'm a man, you're a woman, you know, we support uh, the Christianity and all this kind of thing. It's all BS. He supports it at home, but over here he's still funding the, the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of a lot of people have heard that Russia has sort of been a bad guy in the global stage and meanwhile been ignoring China at the same time, at least at home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it sounds like maybe Russia might be as significant a player as China in some ways. Look, it is. You know, Russia still provides a lot of the ideological, you know, framework of this kind of stuff. Russia still has the nukes. You know, we say China is the leader of the world communist movement right now, but Russia's got the nukes. Mm -hmm. And he who holds the nukes really holds the key to power. Mm -hmm. You know, Russia could still annihilate China tomorrow if it wanted to. Russia could annihilate this country probably if it wanted to. So don't get sucked in to the Russian propaganda that Russia is all pro-family, Russia is all... Um, pro-Christian, they do that to neutralize the conservatives in this country. Mm -hmm. But they are still funding Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. They are still working with Cuba. They're still working with China. They're still working with Iran. Their goal is to bring down the United States of America because if you can bring down the United States, you rule the world. No one stands against you at that point. No, no one stands against you. Talk about the role of Donald Trump both as an American president and uh, perhaps also in the men's movement, if you see it that way. Yeah, I think Ronald, Donald Trump was very positive. You know, he, he's a man, he's a guy, very strong masculine values, very courteous to women, you know, but he's a man. He's an alpha male who says it's all right to be an alpha male. It's all right to make America great, to, to not apologize for America's greatness, to be proud of America's greatness. And I thought he did the men's movement. I thought he did America a lot of favors. Mm -hmm. Women, you know, gosh, you know, half his fan base is raving crazy women who just love him like a chocolate, you know. You know, and we hear about these women who are really, really turned off by Trump. Yeah, a few were, a few were like that, but a lot of women just loved him. And men, young, young men, Latino men, black men, he was unashamed masculinity, unashamed America first, unashamed America, you know, masculine love. There's no doubt Donald Trump loves America. There's no doubt Donald Trump loves his family. There's no doubt he's a man and he knows his place, you know, and, and, and the thing. And uh, he just destroyed this myth of toxic masculinity. People thought, well, I can get a job now because of him. My kids can get jobs. My soldier, my, my, my husband who's in the military can be proud of being in the military again. You know, he's defending America. He's defending something worthwhile. So I would say the biggest masculine heroes for some time would be Jordan Peterson and Donald Trump. Mm. I think those two guys have done more good for men and women than, than just about anybody else you could name in the last 50 years. I, wholeheart I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Where can men go to find out more about you and what you do? Yeah, go to trevorloudon.com. Um, uh, you, you've got to, you can't Google that because Google's forgotten my IP address. You just put it in the search bar. But please, we're releasing a new movie on November 2nd, Enemies Within the Church. Now, it's going to deal a lot with the feminization of the churches the Marxist influence of the churches. But whether you're Christian, whether you're atheist, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Hindu, whether you're Muslim, whatever, that movie will reaffirm masculinity in a big way, and I urge everybody to see it. It's two hours of mic drops, mm. two hours of just hardcore truth, um, calling out error, calling out calling out the the... the just the, the, the malign influences that we're seeing in this country, many of them manifested through the churches and caused by the church's abandon, aban, aban, abandonment of masculinity and leadership. But uh, 
If you want to see my work, go to Enemies Within the Church. That's enemieswithinthechurch.com. Mm -hmm. that, that will show you more than anything else. Thank you so much for your brave work, sir. Pleasure, Will. Pleasure to sit with you. Great to be here. Thank you, sir. This is Will Spencer with the Renaissance of Men here with the New 21 Report and Trevor Loudon. Thanks so much. Thank you.